normally, in a, in a situation like this, I normally give you kind of some graphs and I'd show you some case studies and I give you some boring kind of statistics. I'm not going to do that today. Um, today, for me, the kind of purpose and what I think what um, Marion and her team are trying to create is to get you guys to think. And so for, for us to kind of share some bits and pieces of information and snippets that we've learned so that you can kind of start thinking about how you plan things differently in the future. So, as Heidi was saying, I come from a social media background, that's what I do. And today I'm going to be talking about the fact that we, at the end of the day, everyone is just human. I think the problem is with social media is that um, we've kind of got into this space where people seem to think that we're all robots. Because we use technology. So I'm going to strip all the technology out of it and encourage you to start looking at it as if you were just people talking to people. Because essentially that's what it is. Because if you break down what social media is, social media is just people creating content and people sharing content. Don't let any of the other crappy jargon confuse you, it's that basic. People throw around terms like Web 2.0, Web 1.0, PR, digital PR, Web PR, online PR, Web 3.0, the semantic web. I don't care. At the end of the day, the social media kind of social web came about and people started creating content and they started talking to other people about that content. So let's, if we break it down to those basics, I'm going to take you through about 10 different basic rules that you can keep in mind when you're using platforms such as Twitter, blogs, Facebook, Foursquare, whatever it may be, whatever your preference is. And if you keep these kind of things in mind and you treat it as if you were at a dinner party or at a party with friends or chatting to your best friend, I don't think you can go wrong as an individual or as a brand. So we'll start with the basic. If the conversation is boring, just leave. It's that basic. If you're standing and you're having a conversation with five different people in real life, if it's boring, at some stage you'll just get up and you'll move on to another conversation. That's what social media, it sounds really basic, but social media gives you the power to be able to do that. Because you can absolutely filter and choose what conversations you want to be involved in and who you want to talk to. If you don't like someone, ignore them. I see people all the time on Twitter having a go at other people. Oh, I don't like you, you talk a lot of crap, don't start with me. Well then just stop talking to him. Go and talk to someone else that you actually enjoy talking to. We overcomplicate our lives. So if you don't like someone, or you don't gel with them, or you don't understand what they're saying, just find somebody else to talk to. Do you always talk about yourself, really? If you look at some brands, I mean, I wouldn't arrive at a party and just, you know, kind of waltz in the door and start talking about me, me, me. If I carried on that way, somebody would give me a clap and send me home. I see too many brands and too many people just talking, I, I, me, 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 we're doing this, we're offering to do this. Shut up. I don't want to hear all about you. So you don't talk, to your, talk about yourself the whole time in real life, so why do you do it online? All of the things I'm telling you, all of these little snippets of wisdom, apply to individuals and to brands. So think about it in, in both kind of contexts. Is, real, is that your real voice? Mike that I work with often says that when I run 5FM stuff, I sound like a 24-year-old black dude. And that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to sound like. If I sounded like me, it wouldn't be that cool. So you adapt your tone and your language according to the brand and the, and the audience that you're talking to and how you're talking to them. What's your plan? David was talking about social media and having a strategy and having a plan. You've got to have some sort of objective in mind. It's the same as with uh, Twitter or, or Facebook, from an individual point of view even. When I started on Twitter a couple of years ago, I remember going on there and I felt like a real ass because I started tweeting and nobody was responding and I didn't know where to find the responses and I felt like I was shouting at myself in an empty room. So I left. And then a, a colleague kind of said to me, Mel, you should be there, you need to get back in there. So I thought, okay, I want to get back in there, but what is my goal, what is my purpose? And once you've determined the purpose as to why you want to be on Twitter, what is it that you want out of that platform? Same with Facebook or Foursquare, whatever it is. You've got to have some sort of a purpose. Once you've got that goal in mind and you've got a plan and a strategy behind that, it makes everything so much easier. Otherwise, you just are kind of running around like a headless chicken. You don't know what to pay attention to. So have a plan. Hello, what's your name? Like in real life, Everyone just wants to be validated. 
People just want to be heard. So if somebody responds on a blog or responds to a tweet, it's only polite to kind of say, hello, I hear what you're saying, let's have a chat, or let's not have a chat. But as brands, I mean, it goes back to brands, you can't ignore a conversation that's going on. So if somebody says, I have a real issue, I'm so sick and tired of your service, say, hello Pam, thanks, I hear you, let's sort it out. It's like walking past someone in the corridor and you wave and you say hello and they just ignore you. You don't do it in real life, so why do it online? So just validate people, acknowledge that they exist. Please, the same thing is, please remember that everyone can see what you're doing. If Twitter, if your account is not private, everyone can see what you're tweeting. Your boss, everyone, doesn't matter who. Keep it in mind because too many people overshare online. Don't overstay your welcome. As brands particularly, once your kind of campaign is run or your message is kind of finished, move on and do something else. The online space works quite quickly. So it means from a campaign point of view, you've, you've kind of got a limited window of about average four to kind of six weeks perhaps. After that, people are on to the next thing. And you've got to be flexible in terms of what you talk about. Are you really a door-to-door -door salesman? Is that what you grew up and you wanted to be your whole life? Those desperate marketers, those people that say, it's only two rand off, please buy it now. Okay. <laughs> buy my product, if you buy two, you'll get one. Did I tell you about my product? It's amazing, please buy it. It goes on and on and on. Don't be a desperate marketer. Just, you know, have a conversation with people. If people want to buy your product, they will, but please don't beg. Don't beg for retweets either, that's terrible. <laughs> Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? You know, if you've got a certain story, if you think about any story that you've got in your life, if you tell it to your family, you'll have a certain way of telling it, perhaps. I don't know, my family anyway. I was also brought up in a good Catholic household. Um, if you tell it to your family, you've got a certain way of telling it. You've got different adjectives. You tell it to your mates, it's a whole different story. You can elaborate, throw some swear words in there. It sounds really cool. Bear that in mind when you're talking to, uh, to different people online. Most people wouldn't speak to, you know, Person X the same as they were to person Y. So just keep that in mind in terms of how you're relaying the story and who you're talking to. People are not just numbers. Don't define people by how many Twitter followers they have or how many, how many things they've tweeted or how many Facebook fans they have or how many friends they have. People are people. They have issues and jobs and dogs and lives and kids and problems. The number of Twitter followers they have doesn't really matter at the end of the day to them. We're not robots. There's a tendency in the online space to say, okay, I can blog this and then it will automatically go to Twitter and to Foursquare and to LinkedIn and to, to Facebook. Bear in mind, all of those audiences are different. So don't over-automate what you do in the online space just because technology allows you to. And then, um, did you just repeat that compliment, really? Out loud? These people, this new trend of, at smell actually is amazing, I love her presentation. Me. Retweet at Mal actually is amazing. I love your presentation. Thanks, Heidi. I want to do that in real life. So if somebody says to you, oh my gosh, I love that dress you're wearing. Oh my gosh, do you love this dress I'm wearing? Thank you. You know what I mean? I don't care how many times you say it, it's still crap. The point is, in anything in the online space, whatever you do, Bear in mind, it's all about the quality and not the quantity. So it goes back to, again, I don't, give a, I don't give a crap how many Twitter followers you have, how many times you've tweeted, how many Facebook fans. If the stuff that you're putting out there is bad, it's bad. So focus on the, quant the quality of the stuff that you're putting out there as opposed to the quantity. Good quality stuff cuts through the clutter and people will share good content. And final words, please remember that good content is about video, audio, pictures, and words. Too many of us in this country are really focused on just using words. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, mine's quick and easy because everyone else has taken up all the time, and I've saved everyone else at a time, which is good. Um, but the point is just be people. People are people. Just get involved that way. Thank you.